Hello. So in general, a system of equations is two or more equations in which you're trying to solve all at the same time. So a solution to a system of equations is a coordinate. So we're going to have x comma y because graphically the solution to a system is the point of intersection. And if you have no points of intersection, then your solutions are imaginary. A solution to f of x equals g of x is your x values only. So you can solve basically the same way for either of these. You solve a system in general, but the way you format your answer is the way they format the question. If it asks for a system, you need coordinates. If it's asking to solve f of x equals g of x, then what you're going to do is you're going to put your answers in hard brackets. So if you see hard brackets, that means they are both x values. So for example, 2 comma 3 is x comma y, but 2 comma 3 in curly brackets is going to be x equals 2 and x also equals 3. This is the solution to a system, a coordinate. This is the solution to f of x equals g of x. And these are both important to know, and your notation is very important to know as well. Now, for the calculator, you can easily solve systems if you are able to type them into the calculator. So you put 1 in y1, 1 in y2. You can either check to see in the table if they have matching y values. So if you're looking at x, y1, and y2, if you have, let's take the numbers 2 and 4. 2 would not be a solution if you had different numbers. However, what would be a solution is if you had the same numbers. So if the y values match, then you know that's a solution to your system. Now, if you want to find an exact answer, because let's say it's not coming up on the table, if you want to find the exact point of intersection, you have to look at the graph and you have to do second trace intersect. Right? So, oh, I don't have my calculator up, but if you look at your calculators, second trace intersect will allow you to find the point of intersection. That is very important. We're going to practice that in class tomorrow. Going on to conic linear systems of equations. So let's see. Let me pull up a good conic linear system for you. This is a conic linear system. Oh my gosh, let's go. This one is the circle, the conic. And this one is the linear one. You're always going to start with the easier one, and the easier one is the one without exponents. So you're going to start the easy one and you're either going to get x by itself or you're going to get y by itself. So either get y equals or x equals. So basically the first step to this, and this is in your packet if you just turn over, I'm going to subtract x from both sides and I'm going to add 1. My goal is to get the y by itself. So these go away and I'm left with y equals. And now I have negative x plus 1. I'm going to take that equation now, and I'm going to plug it in to the hard equation. So now I'm going to have x minus 2 squared plus negative x plus 1 minus 3 squared equals 16. And from there, you would have to simplify. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And then you would do box method, second box method. Combine like terms, set it equal to 0, and you have to factor. And you would get two different values of x. So oh, this didn't save, x equals. Now, when you solve the equation for the remaining variable, if you can't factor, you can use the quadratic formula.
Now, you don't have to use the quadratic formula. I don't really recommend it. It should be factorable. If you think that you'd have to use the quadratic formula, you probably did something wrong. However, once you get your two values, you would have to then plug it back into the uh, one of the original equations, and you would have to find your y values. So you might get x equals this and x equals that. You need to then plug it into this equation and figure out, well, what is y equal? Because your answer should be two coordinates. You want x comma y and x comma y again. So what is really important to know about this, though, is that if you have a circle and a line, oh boy, really? Okay. If you have a circle and a line, a circle and a line can intersect twice. It could intersect once. Or a circle and a line cannot intersect at all. So the number of solutions that you can have are two, one, or zero solutions. If you get imaginary numbers, that's zero. Okay. On to three variable systems. So with three variable systems, honestly, it's kind of hard to explain without taking you through it. So I'm going to ask that you turn in your packet and you go to question number 10. Now, with a three variable system, you shouldn't be doing it algebraically if it's multiple choice. If it's multiple choice, what you want to do is you want to create a matrix. In order to create a matrix, you need to take the, first of all, make sure all of your variables are on the left and make sure they're all in alphabetical order. Each equation, all the letters are on the left, they all go x first, then y, then z. So you're going to take your coefficients. My coefficients are 1, 1, 1, 9. I'm going to write 1, 1, 1, 9. And I have 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. Then I have 1, negative 1, 121. This is called a matrix. And from here to here, you will have to know how to do this tomorrow. That's important. You're going to be given a matrix and you just got to write, sorry, you're going to be given a system and you just have to write the beginning matrix. Now, the calculator part is what is difficult, and that's what we're going to practice in class. So, in your calculators, what you're going to do is you're going to hit second x to the negative 1. That's right under the math button. It's where it says matrix. You're going to scroll over to math, and you're going to scroll down until you see RREF. So RREF stands for, I think it stands for reduced row echelon form. Don't really worry about it. That's the fancy talk of saying, solve the three variable system for us. Now you need to put a matrix in here. Now you're going to hit Alpha, zoom, we have three rows, so you're going to scroll up and hit three rows, and four columns. So, oh boy, there we go, four columns, and it's always going to be a three by four. You're going to hit OK, and you can get something that has three rows and four columns, and you're going to put the numbers in. So, oops, don't hit enter as you're typing the numbers in. Lesson learned. Come on. Okay, so we have one, 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 and nine. And then the next row, One neg okay, they're all negative ones. If you're doing negative ones, oh my gosh, please be like, don't be like me. Don't keep hitting the negative buttons. I mean the enter button, because each time you're gonna have to start over. But you have negative one, negative one, and negative one. Please make sure that you are typing in the negative button and not the subtraction button, or else you're gonna get an error. One, negative one, one twenty one. One. Negative 1, 1, and 21. Okay, now that you actually have all the numbers in, you're going to hit enter, and you're going to write this out. Now 
done. So when you solve this, you're always going to get the same format. You're going to get these zeros with the ones on a diagonal. And then your answers are going to appear in the last column, 4, negative 6, and 11. So what this means is that your first column were your x values, then your y values, and then your z values. So this is 1x is equal to 4. This is x. This is 1y is equal to negative 6. And this is z. 1z is equal to 11. The answer here is x, y, z. So it's 4, negative 6, 11. And it's asking which one is not the solution. That would be choice 1, negative 8. And I know it's a, it's a process that you're going to have to remember how to do. But again, you're just going to need to know how to create the matrix, but not actually do it in the calculator. And that's pretty much it for systems. We'll practice a lot of it tomorrow. Um, there's not too much to know. It's just that the problems take a long time, and they're worth up to four points on the region.